hey everyone welcome back to the channel if you are new here or have been following along we've been on a pretty exciting journey building a powerful api gateway using ocelot in ASP.NET core in the last couple of videos we started with fundamental of routing and moved on to securing our api gateway with authentication and authorization let's quickly recap what we have done so far we kicked things off by setting up basic routing in Ocelot. We took our gateway API and configured it to direct traffic to our target API. This means any client hitting our gateway API endpoint would seamlessly get routed to the corresponding target API, all through Ocelot's routing mechanism. If you remember, this is where we started defining how different routes would map to a specific downstream services and we got our first taste of how powerful Ocelot can be for managing complex API architectures. Once we had routing down, we needed to secure our gateway. In the next video, we dived into JWT authentication. We added authentication and authorization layers to ensure that only users with valid tokens could access certain endpoints. This was crucial because it allowed us to control access to our APIs, ensuring that only authorized requests made it through the gateway. We set up JWT authentication in both our target API and gateway API project, created an auth controller for token generation, and tested it all using Postman. Our gateway API knows how to route traffic, and we've secured it to ensure only authorized users can access our services. In today's video, we are going to build on this foundation by adding load balancing to our API gateway setup. This is going to make sure our gateway API can distribute incoming requests evenly across multiple instances of our target API, improving performance and ensuring reliability. This is especially important as our application scales and we need to handle more traffic efficiently. So if you have been following along, get ready to take our gateway API to the next level. And if you are new, don't worry, you can still catch up by watching the previous videos. The links are in the description and the code is available on my GitHub for you to download and follow along. Alright, let's jump into it. First things first, we need to simulate having multiple instances of our target API running. To do this, we need to run multiple instances of our target API. But instead of just tweaking ports in a single project, Let's do it properly by creating a second project to simulate multiple instances. First, head over to the Visual Studio. Create a new project. Choose an ASP.NET Core Web API project template. Name this new project something like um, Target API Sample 2 to keep things clear and organized. Now let's set up the second instance to run on a different port. Open the Properties folder in the new target API sample 2 project. Find and open launch setting.json. You want to make sure this new instance runs on a different port than the first one. Let's go ahead and set it to port 5002. Now let's talk about the NuGet package you are going to need in this new project, target API sample 2. Just like our first API, you will need this essential package microsoft.asp.net.core.authentication.jwt bearer so go ahead and add this package to your target api sample 2 through nuget package manager now that we have got the package sorted let's move on the program.cs file just like with our first api we need to configure jwt authentication we need to incorporate the same jwt settings from target api sample 1 so head over to your program.cs and add the JWT setup just like before. This setup is identical to what we did in target API sample 1. It ensures that target API sample 2 is ready to handle JWT authentication in the exact same way. Alright, now let's not forget our controllers. We need to secure the endpoints in target API sample 2 just like we did before. In your target API sample 2 project, navigate to the weather forecast controller.cs file. Make sure to add the authorized attribute on top of the controller class. This is key to ensuring that only authenticated users can access these endpoints. Okay, now that we have both projects set up, let's run them side by side. Start by running your original target API sample project normally. It should automatically run on port 5001. 
Next, run target API sample 2. This should launch your second API on port 5002. Alright, with both instances of our target API running on different ports, we are ready to set up Ocelot to start distributing traffic across them. This is what will give our API gateway that a smooth load balanced experience. Stay tuned because in the next part we will configure Ocelot to route requests between these two instances. Alright, let's jump straight into the configuration part. In the Gateway API project, we need to modify the Ocelot JSON file to include the load balancing settings. This is where the magic happens. In your Gateway API project, locate and open the Ocelot.json file. This file is where we define how Ocelot routes traffic to our downstream services which are our target APIs in this case. Now we are going to set up our load balancing strategy. Ocelot supports several load balancing algorithms like run rubin, list connection, etc. For this example, let's keep it simple and use run rubin which is great for evenly distributing traffic across our instances. Here's what your Ocelot.json should look like. Before we jump into testing our load balanced setup in Postman, let's do a quick tweak to make sure we can actually see the load balancer in action between our target API sample 1 and target API sample 2. The first thing we need to do is set up some breakpoints in our weather forecast controller in both of our target API projects. This will allow us to see when each instance is hit, so we know our load balancing is working correctly. Go to your target API sample 1 project, open up the weather forecast controller and set a breakpoint on the get method. Right above the get method, let's add a comment like this. This will remind us which instance we are looking at when the breakpoint hits. Now do the same thing for target API sample 2. Open the weather forecast controller there, set a breakpoint on the get method and add a comment above it. Again, this helps us see exactly which instance is responding when we run our load balancing test. So why are we doing this? Setting breakpoints and adding comments isn't just for show. It's gonna give us real-time feedback on which instance is handling each request. When we start hitting our gateway API endpoint in Postman, we will be able to see our breakpoints light up. First on port 5001, then 5002, and so on. This is how we can visually confirm that Ocelot's load balancing is working as expected. Alright, with all of our breakpoints in place, here's what we will do next. Fire up both target API sample and target API sample 2 as well as your gateway API. Make sure everything is running smoothly in Visual Studio. Open up Postman and set up a GET request to your gateway endpoint. Don't forget to add your JWT token under the authorization tab with a bearer token option. This will authenticate your requests. Now click send a few times and watch those breakpoints in Visual Studio. You should see them alternating between the two instances, showing you which port is handling each request. The comments you added above each get method will pop up, making it super clear which instance is running. By setting these breakpoints and comments, you can visually see the load balancing doing its job between our true target API instances. It's super cool to watch in real time and gives you the extra layer of confidence that your setup is a spot on. Alright folks, that's a wrap for today's video on load balancing with Ocelot. Now I know this might seem a bit confusing if you are just jumping in. So if you are lost at any point, make sure to go back and check out the previous videos where we covered routing and authentication with Ocelot. Those steps are crucial for setting up our APIs and will definitely help you understand what's going on here. If you are feeling adventurous, you can even add more instances of your target API to see how Ocelot handles load balancing with 3, 4 or even more services running. The more the merrier. Ocelot's load balancer can handle it like a champ. And don't worry about getting lost in the code. We've got you covered. You can download all these projects directly from my GitHub account. The link is down below in the description. So grab those files and follow along or use them as a reference. We've now covered three key features of Ocelot in our mini series. Routing, authentication and authorization, load balancing. But we are not stopping here. In the next video, we are driving into rate limiting with Ocelot. 
an essential feature if you are looking to control the flow of traffic through your APIs and prevent abuse. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. Drop a comment if you have any questions or if there's something specific you'd like me to cover. I'm here to help you master Ocelot and level up your API game. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.